praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Minister Paul in Northern California, it's 12, 23, 18. And it's about 12 noon here on the West Coast. Let's just praise Jesus for a minute. Let, let's just stop and pause and be at peace. And thank Jesus for what he's done in our lives up to this point. Surely he's done something for somebody out there. He's done so much for me. I have a lot to say, so I'd like to get right into it. But first, I just want to thank you, Jesus. We invite your presence into this message, Lord. Jesus Christ, the King, speak to us. Speak to us. Hear our cry. Hear our cry. Guide my steps. Help us, Jesus. Teach us, wonderful, mightily, Counselor, Emmanuel. God with us. God of all and above all and in all and through all we praise your name. We're so thankful for you, Jesus. We express our deep-hearted thanks for you in our lives and the call and what you did on the cross for your people, Lord. Amen. You know, I was thinking about that. <laughs> Brought tears to my eyes. For real, for real. I was thinking about the other day. You know, God sent his son, John 3.16, his, his only begotten son, to die on the cross. And to, I was thinking at it from a different perspective. I mean, I love what Jesus has done for me. I cherish it. He's the redeemer of our sins. But I want you to stop and think about this for a second. God was watching his son be beaten. God hated sin. God still hates sin. I'm, he said, I change not. And look at this world and, and what sin has done to this world. But, but over 2,000 years ago, he said, he, he sent his son down here to be beaten and die sinless. Left, he left the place that, that we all long to go to. With the person we all long to be with, our Savior. The, the Messiah, the anointed one, the sinless one. We all want to go there. We all want to be with him. He was already there. And he left and he came down here to die on a cross and, and I started looking at it like God had to watch that and at any time God could have stopped it God could have just rose up and just smited everybody and say you're not going to do that to my son I've had enough of watching him suffer you will not do that anymore and just breathe on people they, you know what I mean but there would have been no remission of sins from Jesus Christ that we long to be with. So God had to watch that. And I wonder how that, you know, made our God feel. And he's still watching sin in this world and he's watching us be mocked and criticized and joked at. He's watching evil become more and more evil. He's still watching. He's always watching. He's always watching. He's all-knowing. He's omnipotent. He gave us his word. And he sticks to his word. And I, I just wanted to express that today. That he's watching. So a couple things. Uh, this video may run some time. I have a lot to say, as I said. It's going to be audio only. So get in your car. Go for a drive. Put on some headphones, whatever you got to do, and uh, 
I just want to talk about God's word and and the latest that he's shown me if that's okay with you I first want to mention that in 2019 so basically you know 2019 begins in in eight days at midnight here on the West Coast I'm gonna be once a week I'm gonna be begin to do it's gonna be kind of like a Bible study because the Holy Spirit last night as I lay there he gave me a couple books and he said I want you to teach these books same way we've done it line by line chapter by chapter through the entire book and he's given me two books and I think it's gonna reach a lot of people that's my faith and I know God wouldn't tell me to do that unless he had a plan to use it and so I'll begin doing that I don't have a problem someone else asked if I could come on camera I don't have a problem doing that either and so I will come on cam in 2019 for sure for sure um, my life my wife most likely won't so please don't expect that or ask her to I, I love my wife I'm very uh, very thankful for her and uh, we're all different she's uh, she has never been on camera on YouTube ever and uh, I don't ever push that on her you know and I won't let others push that on her either that's my wife you know so it kind of is what it is um, so we'll do those two books and the books are, are Romans and Galatians so I'll, I'll start with one of those and we'll just go once a week we'll gather we'll broadcast it live somehow I'm not sure about the software yet I think we're gonna have to get new software try something different because what we were doing they just it just stopped working it just it stopped working. so let me get comfortable here if you don't mind and let me uh let me get right into this message. I want to talk about spiritual torment and the spirit of torment and hell. This is pretty deep because I don't believe I've ever taught on hell in my life, ever. And yet, last night the Holy Spirit was showing me something that is so huge that... Uh, I have to share it. It's about hell. Hell is real. And people are going there every day. And I want to talk about the demons and the evil spirits and the principalities of powers and Satan himself are going to end up there because that's who it was created for was the devil and his angels, the scripture says. And so what the Lord really stressed and put upon my heart last night as I lay there, as I said, thinking on him and his word, was he was showing me the spirit of torment. The Bible says it, 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 the Bible says a lot about the spirit of torment in Saul's life, King Saul. And, and, and the fact that I want to mention is that God can allow these things. And so I'm going to read you some scriptures and show, show that. God allowed uh, the spirit to like torment Saul, but it was for a reason. And the torment, if you read, as I've been studying on this, uh, it's I, I want people to know who are being tormented right now by the enemy whether it be in your dreams or through fear or anxiety or stress or depression or voices in your head or whatever it may be that Jesus is uh, uh, bigger than all that and it's temporary. Just check the scriptures. Check the scriptures in the Holy Word. It's temporary. Even in Saul's life, it was temporary. In my life, it's temporary. And it always turns out for the good 
for them that believe. So in other words, God can allow this, and I'll back up what I'm saying here with the Word of God, to bring someone into your life or to bring a change or he has a plan for it with 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 Saul it was to bring David into his life you see that isn't that amazing um, and so I have a lot to say on this because this is something that I've actually experienced and I know that this message is from the Holy Spirit and he gave me a bunch of scriptures to the to back this up with and I feel armed and ready to go about this uh, this this message the these spirits there's a spirit of fear there's a spirit of depression there's a spirit of torment you know these are evil spirits that those spirits are destined for hell they have no option but we do but what the what the Lord showed me last night and I believe that the reason why he's having me speak on hell today is simply the timing of it all those spirits are going to be in hell when the people who through disobedience send themselves to hell go there so if God is trying to get your attention right now and you're being tormented it's because of disobedience Saul was disobedient to God let me, let me give you some other examples That's a tough topic to teach. I know that's right. Um, I think it was it Sapphira and Ananias. It was it those two. A look at Adam and Eve. These people. It all started through disobedience. God told them to do one thing, and they did another. Are you with me? And it's through the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, so what you, God is trying to get your attention. This torment is a temporary thing that God is allowing and God has a plan to get you back on track and stop this torment in your life. And so he's allowed it. And just as he looked down upon Jesus and it hurt him. He's looking down on us now, and if he has allowed something to come into your life, it was through disobedience. Nothing happens without God's permission. Not even from the devil himself. It does not happen without the permission of our mighty God. And so you should thank him. Say, I got the message, Lord. Thank you for showing me this. Or, or thank you for sending Paul here to, to remind me of your word and... Uh, because I'm telling you, I've been tormented before in horrible ways in my dreams. And I can't just say, well, you know, that's all the devil and stuff. It That starts, let me just tell you here, that starts through opening doors that you were not supposed to open. God told you, you should not do this and thou should not do that. And you did it anyway, and you're in disobedience to God, but he has a calling on your life. See, he has a calling on your life, and he's like, uh-oh, look at such and such, and they're in disobedience. Well, you know, and, and a lot of people, they kind of mimicked me or mocked me for this when I said, God told me, you know, a long time ago, and I, I, I told her, I said, God told me, prepare to walk among the thorns. Just tell me, prepare, prepare to walk among the thorns. Remember that? He said that before the door was even open and to this day there still could come some torment into my life and it's always through a dream or something and, and the revelation I got through last night was you know give them this message Paul I'm telling you with all my heart right now saints give them this message Paul 
What you're feeling right now is temporary, but I have a plan for you because there's a calling upon your life. Think of the other people that don't even know what you know and haven't seen what you've seen and haven't felt what you've felt and experienced what you've experienced through my love. I want you to think about them right now. And I want you to understand that they're going to feel things like this. This is just one evil spirit, the spirit of torment. They're going to experience these evil spirits. They're going to be in the same cell with them for eternity. And he gave me this fresh urgent urgency to tell you, you don't want to go there. Yes, we all want to go to heaven, but we don't want to go to hell. Hell is real. Jesus talked more about hell than he did about heaven. And God gave us mercy and grace, which is why I think he wants me to talk about Romans. But the, the book of Romans in the Bible, but it's grace filled. But the fact that we're being disobedient to God is to get our attention. Because it, it requires, and a lot of people don't want to hear this, your disobedience directly to God that has allowed an open door into your life and it could start affecting your family and everything, especially if you're the head of a family is going to bring in something you don't want in and was not intended to end, but what God will allow it, and he knew it was going to happen, it's to get your attention and what can you do, you say, on your end. You can repent. So many people hate that word or just hates a strong word. They despise that word. But you, you, you must repent. Of that sin and turn from it and close that door don't let someone tell you look you can just go kill somebody and go to heaven no you can't you can't go to heaven unrepentant and sin no you cannot the word does not say that and, and repenting is so easy it's turning to Jesus and saying help me this is way too big for me. I'd have got myself in a mess. Help me out of this. You've got my attention, God. I know this message is for me. Help me get out. And you know what? He already has a plan to, and he knew you was going to hear this right now, and he loved you so much he sent his son to die for, but, you know, he doesn't want you in torment. But if you were never tormented, or if you were never put in fear, or never having the issues you're having, that uh, a lot of us, we would never turn to God. That's just history proven. That we wouldn't need God in our lives. That's just because we're human and infallible, just like Adam and Eve. I mean, everybody says, why would you do that? You know, most of us, we would probably would have done the same thing in their, in their uh, shoes or sandals, or fig leaves, or whatever they're wearing. You know what I mean? But this world has grown to a point of evil to where God is trying to get everybody's attention, and he's going to allow some things in your life, and it's it's shown in the holy word of God that we're to study, and that we're to test these spirits. It's to get your attention and save us from hell. So, rebuking... You know, pleading the blood of Jesus, anointing your home, all that's good. But I'm going to tell you uh, the first part, before you anoint your home, before you go put oil all over your windows in your bedroom, and, and, and before you start rebuking demons and stuff, you might need to repent. I mean, that's strong. It's a sobering message. But look at what if, let me just say this, what if, you ended up in hell. You're going to be with the ones. You're going to be with the very torment and fear you've been trying to escape from. And there will be no God's presence. There, will, there is no presence of God in hell. And so God has a plan. He enacted his plan when Christ died on the cross and then rose again. 
And he gave us this word to stand on. And sometimes it says, thou shall not do this and thou shall not do that. There's blessings in obedience and there's uh, curses in disobedience. That's the word of God. And so I praise God that he got my attention last night. None of us are perfect because there's work to do. And he even gives me the books to teach. I want you to teach on this and this. I want you to warn them about hell. You know, that's love. He loves us and he corrects us. And sometimes some of us are so hard-headed, it takes a lot of correction. I'm telling you the truth. But in his plan, we can have eternal life if we would just remain in repentance and obedient to him who died on the cross and his commandments. That's real. You want to escape torment? You want to escape the spirit of fear? You want to escape depression? You want to escape sickness or whatever it may be? Maybe there's something in your life God wants you to repent of. Straight, real talk. And you're going to know when you get that breakthrough. You'll be like, well, have I repented or not? You're going to know when you get that breakthrough. Your eyes are going to be enlightened and everything's going to light up. And all of a sudden, everything's going to be clear. And that stuff's going to lift off you. And you're going to lay your head down in peace and wake up in joy. And you're going to say, thank you, Jesus. But if we don't come on here and warn people, how can they know? So he gives us a platform, all of us, in some fashion. You might ride the bus to work. Eh, stand up, start preaching on the bus. Just preach the word of God and preach what he, he gives you to teach and preach. No, no matter where you're at, the time is short. Let me tell you something. I was thinking about this the other day. You know how we have all these mass shootings in school? I mean, I was thinking about, like, what if I was back in high school, what it would be like? I was in high school in the, in, the, in the 70s, high school in the 70s, okay? And I recall this one. I don't remember anybody ever getting shot or me ever worrying about getting shot. I remember walking all over town in Fairfield, California, from one end of town to, to another end of town, never worrying about packing a gun or, or getting shot or dodging or a drive-by, none of that. Staying out till 2 o'clock in the morning, wasn't afraid of the dark. We'd run around, you know, being teenagers. And there was this one incident. Watch this now. And if, if you were alive in the 70s, bear witness, please. And say, hey, amen. You remember those days. Or, you know, let people know. I remember. The history came on in this mini-series. I don't remember how many parts to it, but it was on normal television back when we had like three channels. You know, like <laughs> like 3, 10, and 13, pick one. Or, or something like that. And it, the show was called Roots by Alex Haley. Right? And I was watching that and learning history, and I was amazed that they were showing this on TV. You know, this, man, this, the way, the way that one race treated another race and that there was slavery and, you know, it was hardcore and it hit me hard and it woke me up, you know, and, and, uh, I heard, I was going to Army High at the time because I went to two different high schools because I was bouncing around. I went to Fairfield High School and Army High School, both. The only two high schools in, in Fairfield. And I remember when I was in Army High and we were about halfway into the series on Roots that uh, an African American had stabbed a, a Caucasian. You know what I'm saying? A black person had stabbed a white person with a knife. And the whole town was like, what? It was unheard of. Nobody died. But that took a lot of anger and frustration, you know what I mean? But it made news. And you know what? It, uh, you know and how rumors go around. It was this or that. It was an argument over the, 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 the show on TV, Roots. Uh, and, and he called somebody... Uh, Toby, 
And that was one of the characters in the show, Toby. And he got stabbed for it. And uh, that seemed like the most severe thing to ever happen. It was traumatizing for me. That was then. Now, probably everybody got a knife. But they don't use knives anymore. You don't go toe-to-toe -to -toe anymore. You don't challenge somebody. When I was in high school, I like, call you out to a fight. Anybody remember being called out to a fight? I was a fighter. You know? I wasn't a saint walking around on the clouds. I'm talking like when, you know, when I was younger or if I backslid or something. I'd just be a real. I call you out to a fight and you could do, you could say this. You could say, I accept. I accept. Anybody remember this? I accept. Well, then the fight is on, but it doesn't happen right there in the middle of the school with all the teachers walking and talking. It happened after school in a safe place where they couldn't see. Kids weren't stupid. You know, you go to jail for that back then. You know, for real. Send you to juvenile hall for fighting in school. They were all empty. All the juvies and, and jails are full now. Lord help me, Jesus. But back then, it was a very serious thing, this TV show. Okay, so does anybody remember that? And if you said, nah, man, it's cool, then there was no fight. And if you did fight, it was a fair fight, and you'd get in a circle, and people would say, no weapons. I mean, that's how we did it. No weapons. And a weapon would have been like a stick or a bat. Not a gun. I'm telling you the truth. No one ever even talked about guns. TV then, it, and look at TV now. There's an article on Drudge right now talking about witchcraft moves into mainstream as Christianity declines. Did you hear what I said? The article, it says, witchcraft moves into mainstream media as Christianity declines. And the things on TV are about Satan himself and the devil and witchcraft and all types of sexual perversion and lies and affairs. And that is considered mild. You can pay and get even more sin. Oh, I want a premium channel. I want a premium channel and I'll pay monthly for it. Show me the good stuff. That's the world we live in. And you know what? Who knows what goes on on those shows? That's why I don't even really watch TV. There's nothing on there. Unless it's like a good show. I, I mean, even the shows I used to like, like Survivor and this and that. You know, reality shows. Or, they're, they're turning into political grandstanding of the, the, the New World Order agenda. It's brainwashing. And so me, i just rather not watch TV. That's me, but I'm not going to judge you. It's like with Christmas. I'm not going to judge you if you're celebrating Christmas. I'm not celebrating. I haven't celebrated Christmas for a long time. In other words, I don't buy gifts. I'm telling you the truth. I haven't bought a single gift for anybody in about 10 years. It sounds cold, but I don't. But I don't not permit it. I don't tell people, because I see this a lot on YouTube, I don't tell people, you can't come in my house with that, you know, Christmas tree on your shirt, and they don't even know Jesus. You know why? They're going to hell till they get right with them. The place we're talking about right now is where they're going. If I'm going to offend them and say, no, I don't celebrate that, then they'll just go celebrate it somewhere else. I'd rather, be, I'd rather my lost family members be in my house on that day. Because they're going to be around someone who who is, is is full of Jesus Christ. And maybe for some people, it might be the only chance they get all week or month. Who knows? Look at the condition of the world. It's changed. It's time. It, it, the, the world is dying. It's rotten. It's full of sin. And God is allowing these things to come down on us. And, and there's more to come. Even worse than this, it's going to be for those left behind. Did you hear me? It's going to be even worse for those left behind. Torment? Oh, that's bad. Fear? Oh, that's bad. Well, think about this. You know, meteors falling out of the sky. Murder rampant. I've had dreams of what it looks like in the tribulation. I have had dreams of what it looks like in the tribulation. I have been shown these things, and it's not good. You couldn't walk from one end of the block to the other without seeing some type of horrible, violent crime. And I've been showing that over and over again, and it's to warn. And, and that's just tribulation. That's not hell. 
Because after tribulation is hell. And then you're there stuck without God's presence forever. Being tormented and bad. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. And you can see the world going to hell. That's why I brought up the 70s versus now. There's so much more. You know, there's things going on in the in the underground and, and all that stuff that we don't even, most of us don't even see or, or, or know about. Horrible, evil things. And you know what? God just told me, he said, that's right, Paul. Tell him I'm watching. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He said, tell him I'm watching. So he has a plan and he has a place to send all this. And he, he wishes that none should go there. And so we got to open our mouths and start telling him, man, you could go to hell. I once was on my way to hell too, but you know what? Jesus Christ came into my life and now I'm not going there. And then tell him what it's about. And then back it up with scripture and say, this is real, you know. I don't know. I may do another message on this. It's just as the Lord leads. Let me give you some. Let me give you some Bible verses about hell. Revelation twenty-one and eight. I'm not sure what translation this is, so I, it doesn't look like the King James. But let me just go over them real quick. Revelation twenty-one eight, and it says, "But the cowardly." So watch this now. The unbelieving, unbelievers, the vile, murderers. Sexually immoral is anybody listening to Minister Paul today? Sexually immoral. What is sexually immoral? Well, read Romans one. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of scriptures you could read on this. Look at this. Those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars. Now watch this. They will be consigned to the lake of fire. This is the second death. Matthew 25, 46. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So there's separation. You know, Jesus Christ, he said, he said, you know, he's going to separate the, the sheep from the goats and put them on the left side and the right side. And he says, depart from me. You know what he told them? And, and, and you're going to go to hell. And I'm just paraphrasing this. He said, depart from me, the ones who were disobedient and didn't accept Christ and obey Christ. He's going to say, you know, you're going to go into hell, which was uh, where the demons and, their, and their, their angels were designed to be at. It was designed for the demons and angels. And he's saying, you go in there. And that hit me when I woke up and I'm like, ooh, I got to warn somebody, you know. And there was a little torment and a bad dream. Anybody here have bad dreams? And it continues and continues to torment you. There's some disobedience in your life that you need to repent of. Straight up. It's as easy as that. God has a plan. Jesus already fulfilled it. He's waiting on you. Psalms 9, 17. The wicked go down to the realm of dead. All the nations that forgot God. You see all this evil everywhere and wickedness? They're going to hell. That's what Psalms 9.17 says. Second Thessalonians 1 and 9. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord or from the glory of his might. No glory in hell. No presence of God there. Everlasting destruction. And don't forget torment. Matthew 13.50. And throw them into the blazing furnace where they will be weeping and gnashing their teeth. You know why there's... I always wonder, that sounds nasty. You know what? I, <laughs> I must have been 15 in the King James. I bought my first King James Bible and it was, I was 15 years old. It said that there will be weeping and gnashing their teeth. I'm like, man, that's hard. Don't ask me why God created hell or why some go to heaven, some go to hell. I don't know that. That's way above my pay grade. Other than what the Bible says, all I know is he has a plan and he's in control and uh, we should obey him and that there's curses for disobedience and he can allow things in our life but it, you know if you're being tormented and knowing i can't never wake up from this nightmare ever there's no end to it it's an unending tormenting nightmare well yeah you're gonna be gnashing your teeth and weeping
But you know what? No tissue is going to come. My goodness, Jesus. Acts 2 and 27. Because you will not... Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, you will not let your Holy One see decay. Well, there's a promise. Look at this. Mark 9, 43. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to, to, go, in with, to go into hell with two hands where the fire never goes out. I don't know what translation that is. But let me continue. This is BibleStudyTools.com. Jude 1 through 7, in a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to what? Sexual immorality and perversion. I'm pretty sure we all know what perversion is, right? They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. There's this one I really want to get in here. Matthew 25:41. I want to get this one in here. Matthew 25, 41. Let me see if I can somehow bring this up. And, uh, yeah, you can change it here. Hold on. This is the ASV, American Standard. So I want to parallel this. Give me a second real quick. I'll be quick. I want to parallel this. How do I change? Change this. Let me just... <laughs> Let me just search on this. Matthew twenty five forty one. Is that what I said? King James, okay? Listen, please listen closely and please let someone else listen. This is Jesus' words. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed. How does it say we get cursed? Disobeying God. And where is that? It's in Deuteronomy. It's all throughout the whole Bible. Disobedience. Okay, I'm going to start again. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Remember the separation? Sheep and goats. Depart from me, ye cursed. Why were they cursed? Disobedience. Into everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. So it was prepared for the devil and his angels, demons, all that, all forms of evil, fallen angels. They're all going to hell. But because of disobedience that started in the Garden of Eden, Garden of Eden with humans, the disobedient people who reject God and, and his son, Jesus Christ, it says that you're going to be split up into two groups. One's going to heaven, one's going to hell. It's so clear. And that's why the Lord has been performing miracles in my life. So I could come on here and say, look at this miracle. God is real. I know people all over the world are saying, man, that, that could only be God. Well, this is his words, folks. This is his words. A separation, heaven or hell. And I'm speaking directly to those that are uh, suffering from torment and fear and anxiety. Repent. Repent, please. Lord Jesus, man, repent, please. And don't go here. I know this message ain't for everybody, but please, please don't go here, man. Please. Help us, Jesus. This is real talk, man. You know, this is, this is getting emotional for me. I might follow this up later. Just remember Jesus Christ died for you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John fifteen, thirteen. There's deception in the world. The enemy can use accusations. The enemy can use temptations that could bring you into bondage. Uh, Paul told us in Ephesians 4 and 27, give no place to the devil. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11, we are... We are advised not to hold any unforgiveness in our hearts. Now watch this. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. What that means is, now this is a special word for somebody. Gain a right to harass us. Ooh. And don't say, oh God, would it do that? Oh, he, 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 he 
There was a messenger of safe, Satan that buffeted the one that just wrote that. The apostle Paul was buffeted. He, he, Jesus told Peter, you know, you're gonna, Satan desires to sh uh, sift you like wheat. But when you come back, strengthen your brothers. And I'm paraphrasing again. And you know, there's spiritual warfare. That's the fiery darts and put on the armor. armor. But spiritual warfare, understand this in closing. Wearing the full armor of God and praying with all manner and supplication in, in Ephesians 6 and 10 down through the rest of the whole chapter. Do it all that. The enemy cannot gain access to you when you're properly guarding yourself. And those darts don't hit you and no weapon formed against you shall so be able to prosper. But that is much different than living in unrepentant sin and being tormented. That's not, you know, that's not a spiritual warfare that's God trying to get your attention to repent. Do you understand the difference? And it and come in through deception. You know, I talked about this false Holy Spirit, accusations and temptations. You know, the devil has a plan for your life and God has a plan for your life. You got to choose God and stick with it and be true to him. Amen. That's the message. God bless you all. Oh, P, I don't think she shut me up. Okay. God bless you. Have a wonderful holiday, however you may enjoy it. Just make Christ the center of it and reach out to some lost people. Don't don't run them off. They're going to hell. That That's what it said, all unbelievers. Well, you going to help them get there? Or are you going to try to snatch them out? Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for these words. I thank you, Jesus, for these words. I thank you, Jesus, for showing up. Lord, you are so, so faithful when we are obedient. Just look, this obedience, this message I got right here was simply me being obedient. I didn't want to do this message. I didn't want to spend this day coming on here talking about this stuff, but I was obedient. And I said, okay, I'm going to hit record, God. You're going to have to show up. And he does every time. He's faithful and he blesses obedience. It's the exact opposite for disobedience. If you need prayer, I'm going to put my email. Okay, Jesus, I will. The Lord told me, put your email in there and pray for these people. If you're being, if you're having torment, if you have lost family members, if you have evil spirits harassing you, uh, let's all pray for you. Prayer is a powerful thing. We Let's come together and pray. Amen and amen.